Thought, and we know all the time that we hear this stuff that they don't trust politicians, parties are all the mm. same, they've lost their faith in democracy. Mm. People talk about health, the NHS, the war in Ukraine, or the invasion of Ukraine. All of these things underlying them is a broken democracy because the most important thing is the process of a fairness behind how we make the decisions for the people who represent us. So thank you very much for being in this room and also the warm welcome I've received in York, which has been very nice to see. And it was good to see the banter going back and forth that you know party conferences never change. <laughs> <laughs> um, now, in any other room, I would talk now for five minutes about proportional representation, but actually I can't think of anyone more qualified than Kleiner to talk about that brilliantly. So I'm gonna take the conversation in a slightly different place around democracy, but I just want to underline that none of this can happen without proportional representation. Proportional representation will not be the answer to all of our problems. It will not be the panacea, but whatever is the panacea. But I think we cannot make sustained change in politics in this country until we get proportional representation. So just want to underline that. The slightly different place I want to go, and actually it does refer a little bit to your question, the nature of democracy. I just want to tell kind of three quick stories, I think, that, that came to mind when I was asked to do this. Uh, one happened earlier this week uh, as deputy leader of the Green Party. I'm all over the country right now as any politician from any party is. And I was in a school earlier this week in Lancaster um, on Monday, and it was 10 and 11 year olds. And um, some of them started to talk about refugees. And they were referring to them as global neighbours. Now, this was not a radical left wing school. They were not a school that were out there radicalising the kids in progressive values. These were just kids with very obvious, basic human dignity that have not been brainwashed by a right-wing media or a politics that doesn't represent them. And they referred to them as our global neighbours. It was just as simple as that. Mm. And I was just, uh, one of the, the kids, by the way, I was with a candidate, and at one point a kid put their hand up and said about the candidate, why does he keep putting his um, face through my, my uh, letterbox? <laughs> <laughs> as Lib Dems, you'll recognise effective frequency. When you hear <laughs> I was pleased that, that they were doing the work. And, but as well as that, I was just thinking about how can these small kids have that humanity? But the people who represent us, and I'm absolutely not talking about Lib Dem politicians here, and certainly not Greens either, and not particularly Labour most of the time, sorry. <laughs> Being careful for a second. Um, but the people who represent us do not represent us, and it's just as simple as that. And we know that's so often down to the broken system that results in regretful outcomes or where votes are split and all of those things. And we've ended up in this awful situation where so often people in this country think it's almost like this horrible feedback loop that as people who represent us say worse and worse things like we see from Suella Braverman, that represents people more and more and we end up in these incredibly polarised situations that bear no resemblance to the conversations we have most of the time when we're door knocking. So that was one thing. And then the other thing is, so I'm elected to the London Assembly um, and have been there for a little while now. And um, I had regular conversations with London Mayor Sadiq Khan. Now I'm not absolutely here not to bash Sadiq Khan, he's actually a much better mayor than Boris Johnson, although I still think there's huge gaps um, in his plan, it wasn't hard to be <laughs> much better than Boris Johnson. You just kind of have to turn up, I guess, and read, read your notes. <laughs> um, but um, I think Sadiq Khan does represent kind of what I would call that kind of establishment politics that's just kind of tinkering along and not kind of looking at these big questions of democracy. And the very first time I ever got to ask a question to the London mayor, I asked him about citizens' assemblies, about the idea that we should be bringing people's, uh, people's voices into the chamber at City Hall. And as a representative, that's an important job, but I can't possibly represent every demography in London. I can't represent every single voice. And of course, there is a role for representatives to work to do that, but ultimately, we still need to hear from the public. And his answer to me was that I was in danger of making myself redundant. And I think that was so revealing of a politics, not just from Sadiq Khan, but I think it's across the whole spectrum that's very top down, that we have the answers, and if we can just give them to you, then everything will be okay. And I'm really proud that at both Green Party Conference and Lib Dem Conference, that we vote on our policies. And there's much more that sense of grassroots democracy that I think is missing from our national political conversation. And then the second part that's very related to this is I've been campaigning in London for something called the London Climate Panel. So that's recognizing that people who are um, challenging the climate and ecological emergency um, and are very well intentioned often very come I very often come from middle class backgrounds, uh, white backgrounds, and very often we're missing diverse and marginalised voices in the, the room. And those diverse and marginalised voices are often the people who are most impacted by the climate crisis. So I've been arguing to have a panel of diverse and marginalised voices on a panel, but crucially, they need to be paid for their time and effort. Because if you don't pay people for their labour, you get the same usual suspects again and again. So the mayor agreed with the panel until I talked about repayment. 
And then he said, I shouldn't knock good citizenship. And it really reminded me of the conversation that David Cameron was having around about 2015, a bit earlier than that, around a big society. And actually, it's a good intention at its heart. But actually, when it's a cover for austerity or it's a cover for genuine or real democracy, then it's really corrosive. And I think those conversations are conversations we vitally need to be having within our political spectrum. So to finish up, proportional representation, absolutely. But once we've got proportional representation, we still have a hell of a job around representing people. And I've not even spoken yet about the media and also about corporate lobbying and how politics is funded. And all of those things vastly need a reform. But I think we're in a good place. No, we're not in a good place for us. Good life. <laughs> we're in rock bottom place. And, and it's a little bit like America with Trump, that sometimes things can only get so bad, whereas actually people start to go, we need to have something different. Now, I'm not suggesting for a second that Joe Biden you know, is that radical difference, but I think undoubtedly they've turned a corner now they've got rid of Trump. And ultimately, we do need to get rid of the Tories. We need to get them out. Um, that needs to be an absolute priority for any progressive party. Uh, but then we have to have this big conversation about uh, democracy, and it's going to require all parties to have this conversation. So thank you very much for having me. I'm looking forward to the conversation. Thank you.